Now, South Africa's wastewater treatment works are in a poor to critical state. In fact, this mostly because of aging infrastructure. The situation poses risk to public health and to the environment. Many water experts say that very little is, is being done to arrest the decline in the quality of our water. Let's speak now to Rulani Shingwanyana, research engineer at the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research. Rulani, uh, good evening. Welcome to today. When we talk about just the sewage pump um, infrastructure, the reason it's no longer operating as it should or as one would expect is because uh, even when you put out a tender to send people to go and fix, uh, it's reparable at the moment. You cannot repair it any longer. It needs to be uh, moved out and new equipment brought in. What needs to happen from your assessment? Because even in that process, uh, there's corruption that takes place and things that are meant to be done have not happened. Thanks, William, and good evening to the listeners. Um, yes, there are indeed many challenges that uh, the uh, South African uh, water sector is facing. Um, when it comes to our wastewater treatment works, um, they, many of them are old, uh, they are de dilapidated, but um, th there is actions that we as citizens can take in order to support the municipalities that we oper we reside in. I would encourage um, the first approach is that we look inward in our households. Um, we find that our um, Many times, the, the average water consumption per person per day in South Africa is given to be 273 liters per person per day. That is too much. So if we can start at home and reduce the water, uh, the water consumption, that will be one step in terms of uh, wastewater production to the wastewater treatment works. Um, what follows next is that, yes, we have got issues in terms of the dilapidated infrastructure, um, in that case, we'll need to um, um, we'll need to find a way to actually uh, gener uh, develop skills in the sector because the municipalities at the moment um, they are s struggling to attract capable skills, and then on the other side, the skills that they have got in, in house um, are not adequate to um, manage the wastewater treatment works. The other issue is that you need to have improved management in order to manage, William, as you said, these tenders. You need to have capable management who will oversee the operation of these works, but also on the other side of things to manage um, the tendering system um, in an um, ethical way such that you attract competent um, uh, candidates. Uh, if you have the data, Rulani, please share it with us from your research and just the scientific um, studies that you've conducted. I mean, how much longer can things go on in this manner? I mean, how much time, if you were to give us a timeline in your assessment, how much time do we still have before things completely deteriorate and worsen? Um, our pump stations um, are struggling. And um, also another issue that I didn't necessarily allude to earlier is the challenge when it comes to vandalism. That is something that needs to be managed, um, even though it's w beyond the scope of what the uh, municipalities can manage as a water service uh, authority. Uh, it is a societal issue. Um, but at the moment, our pump stations are dilapidated. They are challenged in terms of the overflows. What needs to happen is to get both the public and the private sector working together such that we can attract enough funding and, and, and skills, really, um, so that we can build um, a new infrastructure. And also, um, in, in cases where necessary, there will need to be Conditions, uh, condition assessments that are done so that we can identify intervention plans to uh, replace such infrastructure. Those are the things that will need to happen, um, but it needs to be a method methodological approach, uh, which at the moment I'll say that it needs a professional assessment and it will vary 
um, on a water system by water system, and we, we cannot really uh, give at the moment um, a timeline to it. But it is really an urgent thing that needs to be done. And of course, Rulani, this means that for the moment at least, some South Africans are at risk of even losing their lives. We've already lost 23 of them um, in Hammanskral as a result of the waterborne disease cholera, right? And I imagine this would, uh, uh, you know, extend to other provinces if not um, looked at more w with more scrutiny and more urgently, would you say? Yes, yeah. the, the immediate issue that we uh, see with the, the overloaded pump stations is that you find situations where the sewer will just overflow on land and that will eventually then um, enter into other water systems or even contaminate groundwater. That is the uh, dire consequence of not attending to these issues. Um, but I'm, I'm not going to belittle the situation it, it is that uh, the situation where municipalities are aware, but I think they they need support, they need intervention from um, uh, all stakeholders, be it as a citizens, they need support from government to inter intervene uh, methodologically. They also need um, a partnership with the private sector. And, and that is emerging more and more um, of recent where private sector is also getting involved to address these issues because they do affect also their operations. Thank Rulani, you. thank you so much for your time this evening. That's Rulani Shingwenyana, research engineer at the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research. That's part of our focus here on ENCA today, looking at wastewater treatment works and the ailing infrastructure that looks at and is responsible for clean water coming out of your tap. Right now, if you're out of a major city, that is not a reality you contend with. There is very poor quality water being consumed by South, Africa's, South Africans in real time as you and I speak at the moment. Still to come 